2,000 years, Rome has been known as the Eternal City. Everyone is familiar with ancient structures like the Colosseum, but in this video I want to scratch the surface and look at the religious life of the Roman people, how they honoured their gods in the Indo-European tradition. Trajan's Column, built 1900 years ago, is another familiar sight. It is wrong to see this merely as a secular celebration of Rome's victory over the Dacians. It is actually a monument to the Emperor Trajan, Pontifex Maximus, the most important religious title in Rome. Trajan was also deified after he died. The men in Fiscal Armour are the Sumatians, a very Indo-European people, allied with the Dacians. The bearded, shirtless, club-wielding men can be recognised as German auxiliaries of the Roman army by their trousers. Tight trousers were uniquely Germanic. Look how this Roman soldier carries a Dacian head in his teeth as he fights. Brutal. This is the Pantheon. It means the Temple of All Gods. It was completed by Emperor Hadrian in 126 AD. The main reason it is so well preserved is that it has been in constant use as it was converted to a church in the 7th century. It's really hard to describe the feeling of space and weightlessness created by the enormous dome. To this date, the largest unsupported dome in the world. The only thing missing here are the images of the gods themselves. If we head south, we can get a better idea of what Roman life was really like. This town was completely submerged in a mudslide, and the excavations have gone on for the last 200 years, revealing a marvellously preserved town, said to be founded by Hercules himself. I'm in a 2,000-year-old Roman town, Herculaneum. This is a patrician's house, decorated with hanging marble discs of a Dionysian theme which would ward off evil and protect the house. This house has a beautiful mosaic of Neptune and Amphitrite. And here is the Nymphaeum, topped with marble masks of the theatre. Perhaps the inhabitants were actors. This is the Hall of the Augustals, those who worshipped Emperor Augustus. This fresco depicts the battle between Hercules and the Etruscan god Achillu, and this one shows Hercules with Juno, Minerva, and Jupiter in the form of a rainbow. This area, facing what was then the sea, was sacred. This temple was dedicated to four deities, Minerva with her helmet, Mercury with the caduceus, Neptune with his trident, and Vulcan with his hammer. This is the Saculum of Venus, with a sacrificial altar still waiting to receive offerings. The floor of the men's baths boasts this mosaic of the sea god Triton. Women's baths. This is a hot room. Preparing for the bar. Swastika design on the floor. Clearly a woman's bathroom. This terrace area is dedicated to the senator Marcus Nonius Balbus, who helped the city by restoring many buildings. Back to Rome and we can see some more gods in the Vatican. They really show the classical conception of beauty perfectly. Mars, the god of war. And 
Oceanus, the titan of the primordial waters of the world. The 12th century Basilica of St. Clement sits atop an earlier church of the 4th century, which itself sits above a Mithraeum. The bull-slaying god Mithras was worshipped here in the 1st century. Julius Eveler wrote that the slaying of the bull consists of reaffirming the solar and royal apex. The bull is the wild power of life which must be subjugated by discipline. This is one of the experiences of Mithras which correspond to spiritual realizations that the initiates of Mithraism would learn about in the Mithraic school in the room next door. If you enjoyed my video then please look at some of the others. Click subscribe and consider leaving me a donation or becoming a patron. This channel depends on your support and I really do appreciate your contributions. Thank you.